Hey, James here. Now, every now and then, a market receives a new product which is unlike any other product that has previously been released to said market. I'm talking, you know, maybe like the iPhone back in 2007, or this thing, which is the Tula mic. Okay, maybe it's unfair to compare it to the iPhone. However, I've never seen a USB microphone quite like this. Um, it's got some great features, including the fact it's got a battery and a memory card inside, so you can kind of unplug it from your computer and take it around with you. So let's dive into a quick review of this thing and see what it sounds like and see what it can do. All right, as you can see, I have my Tula mounted on the boom arm, which I think is really, really useful. Most USB microphones that I've come across tend to have a built-in stand. Not all of them have a way to actually attach them to a boom arm, however. This is crucial, I think, because by default, um, if you have the stand, generally these USB mics are quite low down. I've always, always, always used a boom arm since uh, my days working in radio studios. Every single podcast studio we've fitted out has a boom arm and a microphone mounted on a boom arm. So I think it's really crucial. It's a worthwhile investment if you're thinking about getting a good home set up for recording. Even if you're just doing Zoom calls, it'll make a hell of a difference to your audio. Um, here's what I mean. This is called the proximity effect. So currently I'm pretty close up on the microphone. You'll get a good quality sound. I've got it slightly at an angle away from me, which is another little technique you can use to sort of prevent any plosives. So if I come around here and go you'll probably get that nasty plosive effect. There's obviously grill on this microphone, which will help sort of reduce this to some extent, but if you have it at a slight angle, and you're kind of just speaking off axis, it will really help with your plosives. But if I have it low down my desk, and I'll give you an example, and let's say I go back here, you can still hear me, right? Uh, you can still hear what I'm saying. However, microphone, the quality is not gonna be as good. You get that sound that you're in a room, right? That's a problem a lot of people suffer from when they're on Zoom because simply they're just using their built-in mic you know on the, the computer so if you upgrade your microphone great you'll get better quality audio but you'll get even better quality audio if you're nice and at least reasonably close to the microphone and not at a big distance like this so that's a quick tip um, as I mentioned you, this is easily mountable. You can just switch the little uh, built-in stand out for like a, it's kind of got like a bayonet fitting on it, which allows you just to put a little uh, screw to attach it to any kind of standard microphone uh, arm, or you could use a desk stand just to bring it up so it's more on level with your mouth. And by the way, everything you're hearing right now is coming straight through this microphone. So this gives you an idea of the quality. It's uh, completely portable. So basically when you've got it connected to USB, that's what I've currently got set up here, a USB cable. Uh, and we're recording this using a free bit of software called Audacity on my Mac right now. So every single piece of audio you're hearing this second is being recorded directly on here. But the cool thing about this microphone is I can actually unplug the cable and whilst, the, whilst it's plugged into my Mac, it's charging the internal battery. So this has got a battery inside and it's also got storage inside, which means you can use it as a portable recorder. So let's try that out now. Okay, so now I've got the Tula hooked directly up to my headphones so I can monitor what's going on, but you'll notice the USB cable has now vanished out of the back, which means we're actually recording directly to the built-in memory on this device, I think which is really cool. And obviously you can hear everything that's going on using your headphones if you want to make it a little bit more portable, get some earbuds or something. Um, I'm just really using this just to make sure that we are recording. You'll see there's a series of buttons down the side. So the middle one here is just like start and stop record. I'm not going to press it because um, obviously if we'll stop recording. You won't be able to hear what I'm saying. And on the other side, we've got some playback options, plus a really interesting feature, um, which is uh, noise detection. So when you are recording, perhaps in a noisy environment, uh, like say, for example, you're recording in a conference, maybe there's some background noise, you know, or a busy, busy room, you can actually press and hold that so it kind of gets a, a level of what background noise there is. And then when you start recording, it will help eliminate some of the background noise that's actually going on, which is really, really useful if you take this thing out on the road. So one of the things I think could be improved potentially is the fact that, you know, if you're holding it like this, so I thought this was great. You know, you might want to go around a conference, for example, and interview people and just use it like a kind of handheld microphone so you can say you know hi bob how's it going uh what what is it you're doing here today you know bob answers the question whatever 
but there's no shock mount in this thing so it's kind of really quite unpleasant if you if you're doing anything hand handheld uh, I guess one solution might be just to have this stand on the bottom um, but you know as I mentioned before like it's kind of clunky and then when you're down here you just don't get the same nice close-up effect you can still hear me fine but I'd argue that really this is not much better than just like recording on your iPhone or something. So, you know, the tuner mic has its uses. I think it's a really nicely designed piece of kit. I still think that there's potentially room for improvement, certainly with the vibration thing, which you just heard. Uh, and certainly obviously, you know, if you want to get a good quality recording, you still need to be quite close up to this thing, in my opinion. All right, so another feature I really like here on the Tula is we can actually switch it to lav mode. Now, a quick word of caution. Lav mode means lavalier, right? So it's a, a clip-on microphone. You'll notice I'm wearing a retro pair of iPhone headphones, which I found unused in a drawer um, because this is the only pair of uh, microphone device I have with TRRS, which stands for tip ring 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 sleeve which basically a standard uh, you know, headphone jack will have two black rings on it. This has got three. Uh, why it's built like this, I'm not quite sure. I guess it's so you can monitor at the same time. Like my standard, industry standard broadcast lav mic, which is a Sennheiser one, which I used for a lot of these videos, uh, this has only got two rings on the end. I'm not sure if you can even buy this with three on the end. You might be able to buy an adapter. I don't know, but um, this would certainly sound a lot better than what I've got going on here. But the point I'm trying to make is this is a tiny little device. You can easily put this in your pocket um, and it's perfect for recording videos like I'm doing now. If you're talking to camera, get a lav mic clipped onto your top, route it into this, record it, sync your video uh, with the, your audio and you're away, right? Um, word of warning, don't ever use the built-in microphone on a camera. Even if it's like a good camera, like I've got a Sony camera here, it still doesn't sound very good. If we cut to the raw audio of the camera now, you'll hear the difference between what I'm recording on this device versus what I'm recording on the camera. Okay, so a few final thoughts about the Tula mic. Do I think this is worth buying? If you're in the market for your USB microphone, I think the quality is absolutely brilliant. I think it's got such a cool small form factor and look to it that it's great. Um, as I mentioned, just like every other USB mic under the sun, if you have it down on your desk, you're not going to get the best quality. You need it raised up. Uh, you know, you need it sort of six, eight inches, just like every other microphone, really. Um, so personally, I just do away with this little desk stand and just mount it on a boom arm or a mic stand. You know, I still think that um, XLR microphones have got their place. Uh, if you're a professional broadcaster like me, you're really serious into your audio, I think Getting a good quality XLR microphone on your desktop is always going to be better than USB. However, for the price point and just for the design, the look of this thing is amazing. Interestingly, I actually spoke to the founder of uh, Tula Mics, a guy called David, and he is a musician, so he's incredibly passionate about audio technology. And he also runs a another company which do a lot of XLR microphones, a bit higher end for uh, professional musicians, for podcasts, radio, etc. called Soyez. Um, so you can go and check them out as well. So if you want to get hold of a Tula Mic, you can order one at tulamics.com. So thanks for watching this video. There was my little review of the Tula Mic. If you found this useful and you're thinking about about getting one let me know in the comments below uh, or maybe you've tried one what are your thoughts on it let me know in the comments remember to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content like this and I'll speak to you soon bye for now hey wait before you go perhaps you're looking to start a podcast for your business and did you know that most businesses make the same exact mistakes whenever we work with clients who are struggling to get their podcast off the ground or they're not getting the traction that they deserve it turns out that most of the time they're making the same mistakes so what I've done is I've compiled a guide which is called the five step business podcast checklist which will show you exactly what you need to know to get your podcast up and running without making the same mistakes that most other people do so you can download it for free at jamesm.com podcast that's jamesm.com podcast go and grab your copy today